our world evolve and the demand of resources gets just too damn high, we need to start finding a new resource. Something renewable. Something that we already have tons of. And something that we all know how to use. Lego. We have seen many things get created from Lego. Cars. Yeah. And even houses. Yeah. So, this all drops down to the question, how does Lego work, and how strong is it? Well, we already know that Lego holds together through friction. At least, that's what I think so. Yeah, I said it. Friction. The tubes at the bottom of the brick, and the studs at the top of the brick, sort of work together. The studs are just the right size for the room to fit in the bottom while still producing enough friction to stay together. Then, we can eventually make a small structure, such as this beam. For my experiment, I'd be building one structure from Lego, then compare its strength to a structure whose friction is probably twice as much. To test the beam's strength, I would be adding weights, little by little, until it breaks. The second and thicker beam may hold up much longer because its brick length is much stronger, and it goes in two weights, causing friction to spread in more areas. From our hypothesis, we know that friction is going to take a huge role in this experiment. That means that if the larger structure holds together, then we can predict that friction is holding everything together because it is acting upon each individual brick stronger and eventually adding up to one big force holding up the weights. It is counteracting these weights, and so this also means that the structure does have more friction to hold it up. So variables manipulated, constant, and responding, like a math question with science. These manipulated variables here are the strength of the structures and the bricklaying pattern and the weights that will be applied. These weights that each would be carrying would be the same, but will increase over time. This can lead to a responding variable, which is the structure that holds together the best. A constant variable is the length of each structure, which is both 32 centimeters and the distance of the gap. Okay, so now that we got all that kind of jazz done, we can test our beams. Each beam will have weights hanging from it, and the more weights, the heavier, obviously. So let's start with the first beam. Okay, it holds an approximate amount of 15 pounds. How about the second beam? Let's check it out. So, this pretty much broke once, all the weights were put on it. So, I can say it holds around 59 pounds. Well, if you want to know how Lego actually works, we need to know its properties. Wow, much Lego. Such science. Lego is actually made from a plastic called ABS. No, not anti-lock braking system, but instead acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. This plastic is high with gloss, has high impact resistance, and is general purpose. However, the property that is most important for this video project is that ABS has great dimensional stability. Well, this means that LEGO is great at holding its shape even in tough situations of tension and compression. These properties of acrylonitrile due to being styrene is already so concrete that it is already being used every day. So, this is why LEGO works and can produce so much friction to hold together. It is because of how acrylonitrile butadiene styrene can hold its shape even after loads of tension and compression. When the two Lego bricks are attached together, the properties of ABS start to kick in and tries to retain its original shape. So basically, when this occurs, the plastic tube and the wall of the brick start to push the studs into the brick, creating a stronger and sometimes an everlasting bond. If you know what I mean. So basically, from our experiment, we can see how friction plays a major role in keeping LEGO together, even through extremely tough situations. We also saw how the properties of acrylonitrile butadiene styrene affected our results. So, this confirmed our hypothesis and prediction that friction keeps bricks together, and how if there is more friction, we can support larger amounts of weight. This relates to science in pretty much many ways. It talks about properties of different materials and how they are used in our lives. It talks about friction, again, and this experiment also talks about different forces and how compression and tension can affect objects. So pretty much all of this fits into physics. The properties of matter in everything and anything.
including Lego. Hey guys, it's the Kung Fu Potato, and I really hoped you liked watching that video. I worked pretty hard on it, and it was supposed to be uploaded a long, long time ago, but obviously I haven't gotten to it. Uh, yes, I will be making more videos this year, hopefully, and I really am planning to, but yeah. I think this video is quite interesting because you don't really see a lot of people using Lego for useful things, and that's where sort of like our imagination comes in and stuff. So it really depends on how you choose to use it. and. This video basically just talks about how, yeah, it's possible to do all this kind of stuff with Lego. So it's kind of interesting because usually you just get it as toys and sets and stuff. But so yeah, I hope you guys liked watching that video. There will be more. And yes, I know.